The last part of this module is going to be on the vestibular system, and we've already talked a tiny little bit about it um, when we're talking about the vision system with regard to the vestibular ocular reflex. So I'm always telling people um, in the clinic that we have three main inputs to balance, um, three main sensory inputs that being um, vision, vestibular, and proprioception. So we talked about um, the information for proprioception when we talked about the somatosensory system. We talked about vision. Now we're going to talk about vestibular. So um, we're whether you're doing specific vestibular rehab or not, we are dealing with the vestibular system a lot in the clinic. So um, whatever understanding we have of it um, can only add to that. Um, that having been said, a lot of vestibular rehab, it's not really considered entry level for a PTA. Um, it might be something that you end up wanting to pursue later on, pursuing continuing education. Um, we're actually, um, our clinic is part of a concussion um, task force in, in the community and um, involving um, doctors, athletic trainers, coaches, um, therapists, um, really community-wide initiative. Um, and the part of the training that I'm involved in is the vestibular part. So um, the vestibular rehab is part of it, vision rehab is part of it. This is largely done by OTs, um, diagnosed by neuro-ophthalmologists. Um, the physical therapists um, work a lot on the um, concussion part of it. The um, return to sport decision or return to work um, has to be made by the doctor or in um, the uh, setting of like a college sports team or sports team, it's the athletic trainer that makes the return to play decision. So. Even though physical therapists are going to contribute um, information to that, it's ultimately the um, the doctor or the team athletic trainer that's going to be making the, the return to play decision. And there are some pretty um, clear guidelines. If you're interested in this area, um, it's really, there's been a lot of focus on it lately, which I think is great because really a concussion is a mild uh, traumatic brain injury. And we'll talk about it a little bit more um, in uh, one of the upcoming chapters. But um, this, is, this is an area um, that a lot of different people can participate in the rehab. And it's also pretty common um, to have concussions. And it, it can have pretty um, large implications, particularly with um, it, people who return to sport too soon or um, people who have uh, multiple concussions. Um, it can uh, really have serious consequences. Um, for that person's future. So um, that having been said, we're going to talk about the vestibular system. So the learning objectives, um, I want you to be able to list the primary functions of the vestibular system. And um, just to make it uh, easy, they're on the first page in the chapter, <laughs> in chapter 22, and we're going to talk about them here too. Um, I want you to be able to describe the difference between central and peripheral vestibular disorder symptoms. So there are a lot of common symptoms. Vertigo is one of the most common symptoms of vestibular disorder, but there are some differences between central and peripheral. Um, I want you to be able to describe the etiology, pathology, signs, and symptoms of um, BPPV, which is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, very common, uh, Meniere's disease, vestibular neuritis, and perilymph fistula. So we will discuss all of those. So the vestibular system, um, like I said, is essential for postural control. Um, and it's also essential for the control of eye movements. Um, the vestibular apparatus in the inner ear contains sensory receptors that respond to the position of head relative to gravity and to head movements. And this information is encoded or converted into neural signals that are conveyed by the vestibular nerve to the vestibular nuclei in the brain. So um, just like a lot of the systems we've already talked about, 
there is a peripheral portion of it and there is a central portion of it. And you can have um, disorders in either one of those that result in noticeable symptoms. So um, these are the four main functions of the vestibular system. So um, projections from the vestibular nuclei in the brain contribute to sensory information about head movement and head position relative to gravity. So that's important if we're going to stay oriented and we're going to be able to track things with our eyes. Um, it con con contributes to gaze stabilization, which is control of the eye movements when the head moves. And that is one of the symptoms that you see in people with concussions um, is they have difficulty with gaze stabilization. Um, it, uh, the vestibular system contributes to postural adjustments made by the cerebellum and um, it also contributes to autonomic function and consciousness. So we'll um, delve into it a little bit, but that's basically the information you need to know. We're not going to go into the same detail that there is in the book, but we are going to um, look at an overview. So the vestibular apparatus is the peripheral part of the vestibular system, um, and it consists of bony and membranous labyrinths and hair cells. So they're called hair cells. It's not hair like the hair on your head, um, but they, they have a similar appearance, and that's why they call them hair cells. But um, those are actually the um, cells that um, translate and code the motion into neural signals. So there are receptors inside the membranous labyrinth. Um, and those are the hair cells, and this is a cross-section of that that's showing it. Um, bending of those hairs determines the frequency of signals conveyed by the vestibular nerve. So if they bend one way, um, it sends an excitatory signal. If they bend the other way, it sends an inhibitory signal. So the coordination of all the inputs we're getting tells us where we are in space, basically. So we have these semicircular canals. They're... Um, really three interlocking um, membranous canals that um, detect movement of the head by sensing motion of the endolymph. And the endolymph is the fluid that is um, running inside the semicircular canals. So the semicircular canals are made up of three hollow rings that are arranged perpendicular to each other. And in the module, there are links to some um, videos that have a 3D view of these. Um, which is really nice to see because it's hard to picture in a in a 2D flat picture, but when you see the 3D model of it, um, it kind of makes sense. So each of the semicircular canals opens at both ends into a, um, a vesicle. It's called the uticle, um, and each of the semicircular canals has a widened part that's called an ampulla, and it contains a crista. And the crista is a body of supporting cells and sensory hair cells. The hair cells are embedded in a gelatinous mass that's called the cupula. So lots of terminology here, but um, I'm not trying to confuse you with the terminology, but just to know we're just laying it all out here. So each pair of semicircular canals, or each canal in a pair, produces reciprocal signals from one side of the head to the other. Um, so increased signals from one canal occur simultaneously with decreased signals from its partner on the other side of the head. So remember how I said the hair cells, if they go one way, it's an excitatory signal, and the other way, it's an inhibitory signal? So you can think of that um, reciprocal motion where as you turn your head, Say you turn your head to the right, it's an excited sorry, signal on the right side and an inhibitory signal on the left side. So those paired signals are what give us a lot of that information. If the signals from a pair of semicircular canals are not reciprocal, then you get difficulties with the control of posture, abnormal eye movements, and nausea. Because it's like those symptoms are telling you something's wrong. Um, I'm not getting the right the type of reciprocal signals. So as long as everything's in balance, it works, and you don't get those symptoms. Um, when it gets out of balance, when you um, the signals are not reciprocal, there's something wrong, and that's when we get the symptoms. 
So the um, otolith um, basically means ear rock, <laughs> if you want to break that word down. Um, so it's, you have rocks in your head. Um, the, the utricle and the saccule are both otolithic organs. They're membranous sacs within the vestibular apparatus. Um, and they are not sensitive to rotation, but they respond to head position relative to gravity and to linear acceleration and deceleration. So that's one of the ways that we can feel movement. Um, the hair cells are called macula. And they're enclosed by a gelatinous mass topped by calcium carbonate crystals. Those are the otoliths. They're located within the utricle and the saccule. Um, the otoconia are those calcium um, carbonite crystals that are more dense than the surrounding fluid and the gelatinous support. So as our head moves, the otoliths jiggle back and forth and they stimulate those hair cells. Make sense? So changing head position, it tilts the macula and the weight of the otoconia displaces the gel uh, gelatinous mass and it bends the embedded hairs. That's how we're, um, that is the mechanical signal that is then going to be encoded into a nerve signal. So bending the hairs either um, stimulates or inhibits the hair cells or the nerve impulse, depending on the direction of the bend. And that determines the frequency of firing of neurons in the vestibular nerve. So um, if it goes one way, we get an excitatory signal. You get more firing of the neurons. If it goes the other way, it bends the other way, we get inhibitory signals and it um, limits the firing of neurons in the vestibular nerve. So the vestibular nerve is the next um, step in the pathway. I had trouble with that word. <laughs> it's the next step in the pathway and it transmits information that's been encoded from those semicircular canals and otolithic organs to the vestibular nuclei in the medulla and pons and the cerebellum. Um, you may remember um, from the cerebellum chapter that there's part of the cerebellum that's dedicated to um, the vestibular information. So the vestibular nerve is the nerve that carries this information. So the peripheral part of the vestibular system consists of the vestibular apparatus and the peripheral part of the vestibular nerve. The central part are those nuclei in the medulla pons and the cerebellum. So in the next section, we're going to start talking about vestibular disorders.